Canada's political scene was rocked this week by explosive new revelations in the ongoing global health imports controversy engulfing Liberal Cabinet Minister Randy Wassenaar. Testifying before Parliament, Wassenaar's shady ex-partner Stephen Anderson claimed the texts mentioning Randy were just an autocorrect error. But newly released messages shattered his flimsy cover story. And where there is smoke, there is fire. And that's how we realize with the help of publicly available records how much Anderson lied to the committee hearing. From exaggerated employee numbers to cover-ups about ongoing business activities, Anderson's testimony sinks deeper into the quicksand with each new discovery. But one thing's for sure, the global imports affair is just getting started. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we dive into today's video, take a quick second to follow us on Twitter. You won't find the blunt truth about Trudeau's endless scandals in the mainstream media. Their liberal bias hides the real stories. But our Twitter feed breaks through the spin and cover-ups. We tweet multiple times daily, delivering straight facts on Trudeau's hypocrisy and failures. We'll leave you the link down in the description box. Tap that follow button now so you never miss our next viral tweet roasting Trudeau. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. It is not a day that ends in why if the liberals and all their crooked allies are not implicated in the most disgusting and vile scandals that are ever known to innocent and hardworking Canadians. And it is certainly not a normal day if they are not caught red-handed and exposed for all their lies, greed, and corruption that they plagued Canada with and not because of any hard work from the opposition to expose these vile scum. Although they certainly are not slacking in any of the necessary departments, but by their own slip of the tongue and their own testimony. This is what is currently happening in the curious case of Randy Wassenaar and his shady dealings with his business partner and associate Stephen Anderson. A pair of greedy and corrupt snakes that were caught in a lie once and started a downward spiral of contradicting statements, changing up testimonies, and failing to fully cover up the truth. It was only recently that Stephen Anderson, Chief Operating Officer of Global Health Imports and Business Associate to our dear Liberal MP Randy Boissonneau, strutted into a House of Commons committee hearing wearing the most lavish and expensive designer clothes and sporting a Louis Vuitton bag to answer the burning questions of the Conservative MPs. What we expected but did not realize until later on was that he was already full of shit the moment he walked into this hearing. His lies are so asinine and remarkable that it was easily debunked just days later by only going through publicly available records, one of which was a LinkedIn page for crying out loud. That man lied about something that could be disproven by visiting his company's LinkedIn page. It is safe to assume he lied about almost everything else, if that is the case. But what did he lie about exactly? What was the evidence that implicated him and the corrupt liberal MP Randy Boissonneau? Well, for starters, let us remind you that the liberal establishment was present for the hearing and they struck down a perfectly reasonable request from conservative MP Larry Brock to get the witness to swear under oath to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. For some reason, the liberal MP that was present for the hearing, Yasser Nafi, found it extremely offensive and derogatory to get the witness to swear an oath to tell the truth because that means we don't trust them enough to tell it on their own. And that is not a good look in a committee hearing. And the sitting chair did not find any problems whatsoever with this level of argumentation. In fact, he was already coming up with excuses and reasons on why he will grant the liberal MP the upper hand in striking down Larry Brock's request. Before we begin, I, uh, I'm going to go ahead, Mr. Brock, go ahead on a point of order. Thank you, Chair. And given the, uh, the nature of the anticipated evidence and the controversy surrounding it, uh, I will be requesting that both witnesses be sworn or uh, affirm to tell the truth. Okay, thank you, Mr. Brock. So uh, you're moving a motion to uh, have the witnesses swear an oath or affirm. Okay, so any uh, any objection to that, Mr. Uh, Nackby? Go ahead. Thanks, Chair. I, I will object to this. We've had this conversation before in other committees with Mr. Brock on the other side asking for something similar, and I've always made the point that that's not the practice. Uh, in parliamentary committees, it is, it is assumed that all, all witnesses are going to be telling the truth. Uh, this is not required by the standing orders uh, either, and I think uh, it sets a dangerous precedent, and I think it, it really undermines um, the, 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 the witnesses in terms of that they may somehow will not be sharing the truth if they are not sworn and affirm. And so I, I, I request that uh, this motion be denied. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, just uh, for clarification's sake to uh, Mr. Brock, uh, you did move this on a point of order, so I'm going to – you can't move it on a point of order. I've been uh, notified by the clerk on that. Uh, I see that we have no consensus on this. Uh, I do see Mr. Fisher's hand. I had uh, Mr. Green, then Mr. Vilmuir uh, on this. Uh, so effectively, the uh, the point of order uh, and movement of the motion uh, – 
you know, there's no discussion to be had at this point because it was moved on a point of order. So I am going to uh, not allow this to happen. I don't see any further discussion on this. Uh, I see Mr. Vilmure's hand is down. Mr. Fisher, do you have... Uh, Okay. I was going to say exactly what you okay. said, Mr. Chair. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now, do I really need to point out the absolute absurdity of this whole scenario? Do I really need to point out that this makes the committee look like a banana court? Why is it controversial exactly to request a witness to tell the truth and swear an oath that they will do so? Why are we concerned about what the witness feels emotionally when we are in the middle of a very sensitive case that implicates a sitting liberal MP in a conflict of interest scandal? The answer is very simple. It is to give the witness all the freedom in the world to lie and obfuscate the truth as much as possible, which as we have come to find out right now is 100% the case. We have come to find out about all the lies and the obfuscation and it starts with the fact that Randy that was in the text was actually mentioned a total of nine times with six new messages being released to the public recently. During the committee hearing, conservative MP Michael Barrett shared some of the early leaked texts with Stephen Anderson that mentions a Randy being in contact with the group in 2022 when Anderson had been telling the committee over and over that Randy Boissonel has not been with GHI since September of 2021, alongside blatantly lying of course and saying that the Randy in the texts, the same Randy that was highlighted and mentioned in completely separate contexts throughout the text conversation, was merely an autocorrect mistake. And keep in mind that was when we only had like three or four texts. Now they are nine texts and supposedly all of them are autocorrect mistakes. Mr. Barrett, go ahead, please. Mr. Anderson, who's Randy? As I said in my opening remarks, I would be delighted to share that information with you in camera only, simply based on the turmoil that I have gone through in my personal life. Uh, uh, sir, that's not uh, how this works. So you're obligated to provide fulsome answers to the committee. I'm going to ask you again, who is Randy? Randy, as I said in my opening statement, was an autocorrect. Okay. Who, is sh who are Shauna and Felix at Global Health Imports? Shauna Parker was in... Our shipping department, Felix, was the account manager for the Quebec government. In 2022, who were the partners at GHI? In September, federal corporate registries in September of 2021 was registered as me, provincially registered. It was both myself and Minister Boisnold. According to text messages we have from you from September 6, 2022, Randy and Felix were to have a partner vote on a wire transfer to your business. It says, quote, so we are game tomorrow, or what do we expect will be the delay tomorrow? I am sending email to Randy and Felix right now, but I know if I send this and we miss tomorrow, it will be done. They will have a partner vote on this, end quote. A partner vote on a multi-million dollar deal, um, that Randy is not an autocorrect. That's Randy Boissonneau, correct? No. Mr. Chair, I, I respect the question. However, Global Health, we, were, we had two companies, Global Health Imports and Global Healthcare Solutions. Okay, so how many Randys at GHI have ever participated in partner votes? Global Health Imports up until September of 2021 was Mr. Boisnold. And then you replaced him with another Randy? As I've told you, it was an autocorrect for another company. And okay. I would certainly share that with you if you would like so to go not, in camera. Not, not Global Health Imports? We were, if you're referring to an ongoing text message that was sent by Global News from the Gowie Group, which is where I'm assuming you're, this is where this is going, the Gowie Group had a contract in place with Global Health Imports and Global Healthcare Solutions. But that's not all, ladies and gentlemen, because just like your average liberal, Anderson lied two more times with one of them about the size of his company being 121 employees and the LinkedIn page proving him false by claiming it is currently employing just under five people. So another text message from you says, sorry, I'm very confused. I updated Randy, Shauna, Felix, and our CFO. Yikes, OMG, this lady has me crazy, end quote. Was that an autocorrect or was that Randy Boissonneau? Randy Boissonneau was never involved in the operating business of Global Health Imports after September of 2021. So we've got Randy, Shauna, and Felix but it's, and it's a partner call, but you maintain that it's not Randy Boissano. Mr. So, Chair, I respectfully uh, say so that. Please, please don't interrupt, sir. How many people work for Global Health Imports? What's the total staff complement? 121. How many are named Randy? 
global health imports, there was one up until September 2021, Randy Guazanol. Imagine how bad of a lie this has to be for it to get debunked by LinkedIn. Anderson should probably autocorrect his mind to come up with something better. But then he just lies again about his company not being in operation since September of 2022 because of an arson incident, and that is why he is not receiving any revenue or profits from it. When we have public records obtained by the help of Global News showcasing that the company continued to operate well after the supposed incident and kept bidding on municipal and provincial contracts. $35 million company, you're each making two and a quarter a year. Randy steps away because he's elected. His, his investments are now in trust. Uh, in that trust, as the owner, as your, and your, is it still the case that you annually receive $250,000? Is that salary or is that dividends? There has been no payments um, since, September, since 2022, since the incident that occurred in Edmonton. Because there's been no business? The business hasn't been operating um, right. since 2022. So he lied about the texts. He lied about this autocorrect, Randy, when everything points to and perfectly aligns with Randy Boissonneau's schedule in the Liberal cabinet. And then he also lied about their operations and the number of employees there. Now tell me, after all these lies, why would we ever trust this individual's word on anything related to the Randy case? If he lied about easily debunked things like the number of employees, why wouldn't he just lie to cover the tracks of his liberal best friend? It is all a corrupt circle of greedy and vile individuals looking to make the next buck as quickly as possible. It is another scandal to add to the long laundry list of the liberals and Trudeau. It will be something that will surely haunt them till the election day. Well, that's all for now. How do you think this Randy saga will end? Who do you want to see punished for this? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also subscribe to our newsletter, where we share daily uncensored and unbiased news straight to your inbox. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I'll see you in the next one.